What's up guys, Mickey Motions here and welcome to another episode of Old School Sunday. As you can see here, we are playing Formula 1 Championship Edition on the PS3. I never got the chance to buy this game because back in 2006 when this game came out, I didn't have a PS3. I only bought a PS3, I think it was back in 2009 or 2010. So yeah, I don't know why I never actually ended up buying this game when I managed to get a PS3. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I went straight into Formula 1 2009 on the Wii and played R Factor for Formula 1 mods on the PC. And then after, when, of course, when Formula 1 2010 came out, uh, I was just playing that. So that explains why I never actually played Championship Edition. Now, this game is so fun. I'm having the time of my life right now because this game is so much better than uh, Codemasters Formula 1 2013. I'm having so much fun with this game right now. And sorry about my driving, this is the first race uh, I played on this game, so it was just taking a while to get used to the physics in this game and the handling of the wheel. Now unfortunately there is no online of this game at the moment, the servers are currently shut. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a tutorial explaining how you guys can be able to play Championship Edition online. Uh, there is a way to do it, you need some kind of software on your computer, and I will be setting up the only Formula 1 Championship Edition server in the world tonight and hopefully I'll be able to live stream for you guys so you guys can see. If I, if I do live stream, I'll be live streaming at 8 o'clock so make sure you don't miss that. If you guys want me to show you how to do it on Gran Turismo 5 and many other games, please tell me in the comments and I'll show you how to get the servers working on other games that are shut down. Now as I explained with Formula 1 2006 on the PS2, uh, it's pretty much arcade, it's the same, pretty much the same thing, uh, the physics are a bit more improved on this version, but um, you know, it's so much fun to play, and I know that it's not a sim, but you know, I really feel that it's so much more entertaining to play than Codemasters games, because I think the problem with Codemasters games at the moment is that they concentrate on trying to balance this arcade and sim game, and it just, just doesn't seem to work at all. And there's always seem to be problems with the physics, there's always some kind of glitches going on somewhere. And it just ruins the actual experience of the game. And they're saying they dig up Codemasters, but I find it really funny when Steve Hood tries to say on Twitter, Oh, we have the most realistic Formula 1 game at the moment. And then he goes on to say that it's better than most simulators out there. And I'm just, I'm just face palming because the physics is just nowhere near right. I'm just wondering how they're going to make the V6s work. You know, I'm just hoping that they're gonna, you know, use a new game engine and just create the physics from scratch and just start from square one because otherwise this game is gonna be a complete disaster like 2013. Now, next week I will be doing like a two or three part series just explaining about why I feel in my opinion Formula 1 2013 wasn't a huge success and I'll be proving it with statistics from the game sales analysis that they do every quarter of a year and I know every single old school Sunday video I always seem to just have a little rant talking about Formula 1 2013 and how annoying it really is I just can't resist it it's like Call of Duty when you have to go blame Van der Haar or whatever game developer that's <laughs> making the game because they always seem to ruin it somehow it's just so frustrating when you see all these game developers literally ruining game series as the years goes on I don't understand how you can ruin a game series as the years goes on. You would think they would have better technology to improve games and make them always better. It's just, I don't know. It's absolutely ridiculous. I think all these game developers are just caring about the money now, but I guess it's all business. Like, I guarantee in a few years time, like every single game will be free to play and it's just going to be DLCs that you're going to have to pay for because all these game developers have realized now that more money is coming in from DLC. And the reason for that is because if your game is not doing that well, you can always have people buy DLC for the same price as the actual game. So let's say you're paying an extra £40 for DLC like on Call of Duty Ghosts, which is currently happening at the moment. You can buy the DLC and that means that the game developers will still profit like they did before. Okay, they'll have to put a bit of work, but it's not really that hard for them to make a new map, you know, add, a, add one or two guns in and that's it. And this is exactly the reason why Codemaster did the same thing with this classic edition. This was the whole purpose of it. But anyway, I'll go into more detail into the three-part series that I'll do during next week. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure you check out the live stream if I actually managed to do one. But I'll be setting up a server right now, seeing if it works. But for now, this is Mickey Motions. I'm out. See you. Peace.